Welcome to Last First Date Radio, featuring interviews with experts in dating, relating, and mating in midlife. And now, here's your host, Sandy Weiner. This is episode number 451 with Laura Bellata, common triggers for dating burnout and how to avoid them. Hi, everybody. I'm Sandy Weiner. Welcome back to Last First Date Radio, where we believe a woman of value naturally attracts the respect she deserves in life and love. And if you're looking to build your confidence and show up more authentically in your love life and your life in general, I wrote a book just for you, and it's called Becoming a Woman of Value, How to Thrive in Life and Love. It's filled with 30 tips and exercises to help you step more fully into your value. And it's available now on Amazon for Kindle or paperback. And this week's tip on becoming a woman of value is step number 14, which is declutter your life. We often talk about decluttering Marie Kondo style, but we have to declutter our lives too. And I was just talking to another podcast guest about decluttering your inbox. I think that's one of the most important places to start is either your email inbox or your dating inbox. If you've got lots of clutter in there, it's really hard to focus on finding love. So my challenge to you is take one step forward to decluttering your life in some way this week. Before I bring Laura on, I want to invite you to join our Facebook group. It's called Your Last First Date, and it's a place for women over 40 to come and receive positive, kind, support to move you forward on your journey to love. And now for our guest, Laura Bellata. She is a a wonderful dating coach, matchmaker, and author. She's been doing this for over 19 years. And um, dating is complicated, and she helps to make sense of it. Her experience, her skills, and insights have led to thousands of successfully matched singles through her events and one-on-one matchmaking coaching sessions. And now on Clubhouse, she's doing the same thing. We just had a little talk about that. She's also the host of Dating and Relationship Show on Global News Radio 640 in Toronto. Welcome to the show, Laura. Hey, thanks for having me. Happy yes, have club. You. Yes, we did have that conversation <laughs> around COVID. I mean, uh, not COVID dating, sorry, but that's in the forefront because that's all I seem to be talking about these <laughs> days. But Clubhouse for sure. Wow, what a way to meet singles nowadays, let me tell you. Yeah, I'm, so uh, I'm a little tired this. Yeah, I'm a little <laughs> tired this morning because I facilitated and hosted a room with about 300. We reached up to about 380 people last night in this room with single people. And it's such a great way for singles to meet. And who would have known? I mean, that wasn't the the reason I got on the app. When I first got on the app, I think it was January 14th. I had no clue what it was. I actually didn't start using the app until about five days later. I just started looking around and poking my head in and And then I started seeing some other people hosting these singles events. And I'm like, hey, I'm the queen of singles events. I've been hosting singles events for 19 years. If they're doing it, man, I'm going to do it. So (laughs) um, basically, I host these these rooms where we call them like shoot your shot rooms or meet, mix and mingle. Um, I have two different styles. But then we bring people up on stage and we invite everybody up to the stage. And so whoever, you know, is interested in, in, in per, per, perhaps like just having conversations or shooting their shot, meaning they can, um, it's called shoot your shot. And then you can ask somebody in the audience or ask somebody on stage to go into a breakout room with you. It's basically like on a three minute speed date and then get to know them a little bit better. Some people don't want to go into that breakout room and that's okay. Uh, but so then they slide into each other's DMs and then they get to know each other that way. So it's just uh, a great platform for singles to meet and uh, we are making such amazing connections and I've been getting such great feedback. People keep thanking me, I love your rooms. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the feedback's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, that's one way actually to avoid dating burnout when you, when you're constantly on an app like Tinder or Bumble and you're feeling like there are no good people anymore, you try a new thing like Clubhouse, which is a social media app that's audio only. If anybody is new to Clubhouse, it's by invitation only. And it's, it's, uh, it's only available on iOS, on Apple um, phones, iPhones right now, but Android is rolling out soon. 
I've been a speaker on a stage in one of the rooms and it's, it's really fun. I mean, it's a place to come and learn, ask questions of experts who you normally couldn't talk to. I mean, it's, it's really quite amazing. So check it out. And um, let's talk about burnout though. And, and what, why do people have burnout? What causes it? I think with all the struggles that they're having using online dating sites uh, right now, because well, basically, that's really the only way uh, to meet people right now. Or, you know, other people are meeting um, through friends and family members as well. And through Clubhouse, of course. But they're, yeah, they're just sick and tired of the games that people play on these dating sites. And I f- I'm finding that a lot of people use dating sites and they're not really ready to be on the sites or they're not being clear with the type of person that they're looking for or the type of relationship that they're looking for. So that's really, really important. If you're gonna use a dating site, just be clear about who you are and the type of person or the type of relationship that you're seeking. And so I think that um, there are a lot of games and I think it's, it's, it's a real struggle. Da- online dating is a real struggle. And yeah. that's pretty much why uh, people are getting burnt out with, with dating nowadays. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of games and a lot of, also I find a lot of empty conversations. Hey, how's it going? How are you? Okay, how are you? Hey, beautiful, how are you? <laughs> and it just doesn't go anywhere. And, and it's like, you're, you've got a pen pal who doesn't say anything. So in those and cases, it, what do, you, do you have any suggestions? Yeah, so it's, and also, you know, I've, I'm also single and I'm on these sites and I get so annoyed with some of these guys because I guess one guy invited me on a first date to his house the other day. And I thought, I'm, it's, it's COVID, like we're in COVID and I don't know you. Have you heard of Stranger Danger? He's like, yeah, come on over. We're going to have a hot tub and, and I, you know, and I, trust me, you know, we can distance. I'm safe. And I thought, First of all, I'm not going to, well, and he wanted me to travel 40 minutes to, to go see him. So I said, well, and then he, so I said, listen, I would never go to a guy's house on a first date that I didn't know. And he said, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. And then he says, well, here, let's meet up at a park. And I said, well, which park? So he shows me the park. I go, where is that? He goes, well, that's my, where he lives. It's, it was Guelph, Ontario. And I thought, I'm never going to go to your city. Like I'm old fashion I'm a little traditional and so then he deleted me Mm. then I was talking to this other guy who asked me if I had kids because he had three kids and I said no I don't and then he deleted me (laughs) (laughs) and you're right a lot of empty conversations with back and forth banter but it's like one word answers and it's like, is this going anywhere? So yeah. Well, what you're describing also is a lot of assumptions. You know, it's, it's, I'm assuming that you'll want to come to me. I'm assuming that if you don't have children, that we're not going to be a good match, but I didn't get to know you. I know nothing about you. And boom. I mean, I've deleted people for real reasons, like uh, somebody connected with me on Bumble the other day. And he, so I, I sent him, you know, a nice hello. He sent me like five texts for my one text. So immediately it felt like anxiety. It was like, boom, 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 boom. It was coming on too strong. Yeah. And then he immediately wanted to get off the app and sent me all of his private, like, here's my phone number. Here's my Facebook. Here's my this. Here's my. And so already I had a bad feeling, but I did check out his Facebook page and he had so much like hate posts. Like it was was, every instinct I had was true, but I checked him out. I don't write people off in two seconds. Like a lot of people will write people off. Um, so we have the games. We have we have people who don't go anywhere with their conversations. We have the assumptions. What can people do to stop having dating burnout? You have to avoid the red flags, first of all, you know, and so some of the red flags are you're chatting with someone. They don't want to hop on a phone call or a video call. Hey, at least a phone call. If you're not willing to hop on a phone call, then you should not even be on a dating app. If they've um, written hardly anything in their bio, or maybe it's empty, that's a red flag. Like, are you taking this process seriously? I don't even bother with those profiles. Or they've only posted one picture of themselves. 
or your gut. I mean, your gut never lies. When your gut tells you something, you need to listen to it. So those are just some of the triggers and some of the red flags. Um, and Or they, they start talking about sex right away. Or, you know, there's a lot of scammers online too. Not as many as there used to be. But if they start coming on really, really strong like this guy did, that's a red flag. Like that's just not normal. Or they start telling you that they're so honest and they want a relationship and they're looking for marriage and love and they start almost serenading you. <laughs> Those are red flags. In order to avoid dating burnout, you just really need to change your mindset and be patient. I mean, because this is a process. Online dating is a process. If you think you're going to start online dating and poof, magically, you know, you're not going to put the time in and you're going to meet somebody, then you have to think again. It takes time. And it is difficult. I say it's like finding a needle in a haystack. It's really, really hard. Uh, make sure that you're taking time out just for you while you're online dating. And this could be focusing on your health uh, by eating well, by exercising regularly, and just doing the things that you love and that make you happy and that make you feel really good about yourself. And again, you know, don't spend time talking to the wrong people. And as soon as you see those red flags, okay, as soon as they start popping up, move on. Or if you're questioning this, this person, get them on a video call sooner than later. I do it within a couple of dates. And some of them will say, oh, you're moving so fast. Well, yeah, because I don't want to waste my time. So if you don't want to hop on a video call or a phone call soon, then I just don't have time for you. I mean, for me, that's a red flag because I'm a very busy person. So I just want to know right away, hey, is there some sort of chemistry there? And then if you feel frustrated, right, with the whole process of online dating, then just take a step back and then just regroup while you are taking a step back, okay, and regrouping. You're going to use the, the slower time to self-reflect on who you are what your needs are, and what you truly, truly want in a relationship so that you have a clear vision when you're ready to get back out there. And while you're doing this, okay, you want to find your why. So before you get out there again, make sure that the reason why you're doing it is right. Do it because you're ready to connect and find someone again, not just to fill a hole or a void or try to convince yourself if, if you're not really ready to get out there. So make sure that you're ready to get out there again. And then take the time to think, you know, like, what is it that I really, really want out of a relationship? You know, what does that look like for you? And then you're going to find your how, like, think about how you want this phase to look like in your life. Like, how will it be different this time around? And then think about the needs that you want to have to, to you know, to, to be in a fulfilled relationship. What is going to be the most important for you? And also focus on what you're looking for and be honest with what you're looking for and be truthful. And then you're going to, once you're ready to get back out there, you're going to uh, post new pictures and you're going to have a new bio and you're going to come out with a fresh new outlook. And that's my advice. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. And it's all really good advice. I think people really struggle with how do I know what kind of relationship? How do I know what I really want? So do you have any tips for people to really hone that list down and really get clarity around what's really important? Well, sure. You know, take a look at yourself and take a look at your past relationships you know what worked what didn't work and be honest with yourself and don't just search for a partner based on chemistry only yes chemistry is important and looks are important but there's more to a relationship than that an amazing relationship needs both chemistry and compatibility in order to work and then take a look at your negotiables and your non-negotiables so negotiables are things that are not so important, right? These are things that you can be very flexible on. And these are things like hair color, height, occupation, and then take a look at your non-negotiables. Now, these are things that uh, go against your values and morals and that are really important for you. You know, maybe if the person smokes, that's a deal breaker. 
and you know, okay, I'm not going to get into a relationship with a smoker. I made that mistake once. I thought I could change this person. Well, you can't change someone. So you have to, you know, make those decisions beforehand and just avoid the red flags because that was a red flag for me. But I thought, oh, well, he's really cute and I think we get along. So I'll just try to change him down the road. Well, that didn't work. And then he thought I was his mommy. He called, he used to call me his mommy. You're not my mommy. <laughs> so that relationship didn't work out. So your non-negotiables are things that go against your, like I said, values and morals. And there's things like religion. Where do you see yourself living in the future? You know, are you a city person? Are you a country person? Do you want children in your future? So uh, taking a look at your negotiables and non-negotiables. So, so basically that's it, you yeah. know, and yeah. just being honest with yourself. So many of us hop into these re relationships and we try to move so quickly, take a step back and go slow. And, you know, I always suggest you don't have sex right away because it clouds our judgment, especially mm -hmm. as women. We get emotionally attached to men when we start having sex too soon. I know I do. So I just yeah. avoid it. Mm -hmm. You know, like he needs to earn that. You need to prove to me that you're going to be in there for the long haul. And also that we get along, you know, do our goals align? Do our values align? Do we share the same interests? So yeah, it, those are, those are all important things. Absolutely. So you know, we're talking about how to get clear for yourself. And often people are dating online and they overlook people who are potential partners um, based on a profile or based on a first message. Do you have any advice for those people? Well, you know, and that's the thing that sucks with about online dating is that you could be missing out on somebody fantastic for you, but they don't have nice pictures or they haven't really written much about themselves in their bio, or maybe they're not really good writers and they don't know how to express themselves. And so that's why I say it's so important to treat your profile almost like a job. And it's not, you're not looking for a job, but you're looking for love. Listen, everybody, 99% of the world, every, I mean, is looking for love. That's the one thing that is important to all of us. So you need to treat online dating seriously and you need to put your best foot forward uh, in order for someone to be serious about you. And so unfortunately, when you are sending out a message, what we know, what, especially to a woman who gets inundated with tons of messages and your message is just, hey, well, that message might get lost. So you have to take the time out and take a look at what she's written in her profile and then find something relatable. You know, maybe you share a common interest. Maybe you guys like the same book author and then write something based on that. Hey, like I noticed you uh, are a fan of Stephen King. Well, so am I, you know, what's your favorite book? This is my favorite book. So you need to stand out and you need to post at least four to six pictures of yourself. And if you don't have good photos or recent photos, then get some taken. You know, uh, you can get photos taken for as, as low as a couple hundred bucks, some professional shots, or you can even take your own photos, grab an iPhone uh, or an, an Android, set it on a self timer, get ready, groom yourself. You know, if you're a lady, you wear makeup, put some makeup on, make sure your hair's done. If you're a guy, you know, again, groom yourself, pick, choose a couple of outfits. So make sure you have some natural light coming in. Uh, I love early in the morning and then um, in the evening, like, well, late afternoon around 4 p.m. And then take several photo, photos, you know, pu uh, put your phone on a self timer, like the 10 second self timer, timer and then just snap a whole bunch of photos of yourself and um, do about, you know, take about 50 to 100. And that's how you're going to get a good photo. And some people say, well, Laura, I don't look good in photos. And that's because you're telling yourself that you don't look good in photos. Our mind uh, plays tricks on us. So when you tell yourself you're not going to look good in a photo, well, guess what? You're not going to look good in that photo. So 
you need to make sure that you change your mindset around that. And again, take snap a whole bunch of pictures. And I promise you, you're going to have at least three to four great photos just from that photo shoot or get a friend to come over and snap a whole bunch of pictures of you. But the trick is to take a bunch. When you take a bunch, you're going to have a few that you can work with. Great tips. And I think, you know, there a lot of people say, well, it's the pandemic and I can't get professional photos taken. So I'm just not going to date right now. And, you know, I agree with you. We can take our own. Everybody pretty much has great cameras on their phones. Mm -hmm. There's no excuse not to have at least two or three good photos up and four to six is better. But do do that for now and, and maybe after the pandemic, then go for a professional photo shoot. It really doesn't have to cost a lot. There are many services that only do online pictures for online profiles or on LinkedIn, things like that. And they're like a hundred bucks, like you said. I totally agree. I yeah. mean, you have to, like I said, it's so, so, so important because people are going to judge you first on your photos and then on your bio. So yeah. those two things have to be pristine. They just definitely have to reflect who you are in the best light. And again, be honest with who you are and what you're looking for in your profile. Yeah, totally. Agree. And that's also going to help you avoid dating burnout. Mm -hmm. Be right? honest. And mm -hmm. give you more choice. You'll stand out from the crowd. You know, even one simple tip that I've shared is wear color. Like women generally wear black and they just look like a sea of black out there. So when you put on color, or you take a picture against an interesting background, you immediately will stand out from other people. You will. And it's, it's like a marketing thing, you know? The you most wanna stand out. Yeah, and the most popular color that uh, men love on women on online dating sites is red. Yeah. Yeah. The color of love. The color of love. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I know this is a big topic, but dating during the pandemic, I teach a whole course on it. I would love to hear your tips for people who maybe they put dating off, but man, this thing isn't ending anytime soon. Mm -hmm. so, no, it's not. Yeah. So what, what tips do you have for people who want to date now? Okay. Um, so let everyone know that you're single and because, hey, listen, someone in your circle may know the perfect person for you. But if you don't let them know that you want them to keep you in mind, then you need to tell them because they might not want to butt in your business, right? Uh, you want to join meetup groups um, and virtual meetup groups. And maybe you're going to meet people who share similar interests. You're going to join Clubhouse. Um, because it's taking social media by storm and it's a great way to meet singles. And I know you mentioned earlier that it's by invite only, but you don't hesitate to sign up because I didn't have an invite. I didn't even know what it was, but I signed up and somebody let me into the app right away. So if you have friends that are already on the app and you sign up, they can let you in right away. So don't let that discourage you. I suggest get on online dating apps. I know some of us don't want to, but hey, I mean, <laughs> you have to if you want to meet somebody, really. Uh, minimum two, maximum, I think three. Because what happens is when we use more than three apps, we start getting confused. And then we start meeting all these people. And then we don't even remember where we met them. And then you don't end up going on any dates because we're talking to so many people. <laughs> so it gets confusing. I also say be proactive and slide into people's inboxes, you know, send them messages, but be crafty with your message. Don't just say, hi, hi, what? <laughs> right. Uh, and women too need to be proactive. There are a lot of women out there that won't approach a guy. There's a difference between approaching a guy and chasing a guy. You don't want to chase a guy. I get it. You don't. I, I still, I'm very old fashioned and I believe that men are hunters and they want to almost like claim their prize. I hate to say it like that, but men are hunters. And so, but, so don't chase them, but let them know that you're interested in them. So you want to poke your head in there. And I just want to talk about that one thing because on yes. Clubhouse, 
one of the rooms I was in, there was a man who, uh, it was a room for women about what women want. And um, a man came on and he said, I'm, I'm really serious about looking for love. He was really cute. And one of the women was bold enough to say, hey, I really like that guy. And if he's really interested, let's talk. Mm -hmm. And so being bold enough to do that on any app, but Clubhouse, you can actually talk and people can hear you, which is pretty sexy. Yeah. Oh, of course. Like I, when I was younger, I don't do it anymore. And of course we're in COVID, but when I was younger, I had no problems writing my phone number down on a piece of paper when I saw a guy that I thought was cute and I just walk right up to him and I'd hand it to him and I'd say, I'm not sure if you're single, but if you are, maybe we can go out for a drink. And then I would hand it to him and run off. (laughs) I was like, (laughs) <laughs> I was a little scared, but you know, it did work most of the time. Yeah. And I if love it, it didn't, and if it didn't, um, it wasn't really rejection because I didn't take it as rejection because I, I didn't even know them. And maybe they were in a relationship. Who knows? I mean, they didn't have a ring on their finger, but that doesn't mean that they weren't in a relationship. So I love that. Yeah. I once I was once on a date in a restaurant where my date was late and his date was late, and we started talking. And I liked him so much more than the date that I was meeting. And I really regretted not giving him my number because I don't think he was that into his date either. And, you know, and so after that, I actually made cards up with my Google voice number and my screen name, like my, my special email that I had then for dating. And so didn't disclose any my last name, any, any information that I didn't want to give out, but I thought, you know, have these calling cards like these to have back in the old days. Right. And it's a good thing to carry around. I love that. You know, I love that. You just have to put yourself out there as much as possible. Yeah. And also, you know, when you are online dating, don't just look at somebody's pictures. You want to read their bio. So, so, so important. You also want to make a reference to something that they've written in their bio and show them that you've actually taken the time to read what they've written. And once you start chatting back and forth after a few chats, ask for a video date. I go right in for the kill. And some guys have disappeared and that's fine. They have to, and I'll say it again, they have to at least be willing to hop on a phone call because this whole texting back and forth, it just gets so exhausting And let's face it, we're busy. I know I am. And so that's what I do. Now, once you've hopped on this video date, you're going to qualify them. You're going to get to know them a little bit. Maybe you want to hop on a few video chats before you meet them in person. And then you're going to set a date. I know, well, I'm in Canada and our coffee shops aren't even open or are they? I think they just opened up, but Mm -hmm. go for a coffee date, go on a shopping date. I went on a shopping date with a guy at the grocery store. That was so much fun. I love that. (laughs) I know. I got to see what he put in his cart. Yeah. Then after the date, he asked me if we, if I wanted to make out with them. I was like, no, we're not making out. (laughs) What's what's up with these guys? (laughs) Uh, Walking dates are fantastic. Breaks the ice a little bit. uh, Gives you something to, you know, talk about rather than Mm -hmm. having to think of like, you know, there's that dead air sometimes. At least you can. Uh, look around and 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 uh, make a reference to something in nature, you know. Um, yeah, helps and with the, the conversation. The other thing about walking dates and doing anything side by side is that men open up more when they're side by side rather than face to face. Women do too. Yeah, so I think so. Re- they're really great if you're shy. Yeah, you tend to be on the shy side. They're really fantastic rather mm-hmm. than sitting in front of somebody because some people tend to get really, really nervous. Yeah, it's an awkward thing sitting across from a total stranger having coffee or or lunch or dinner. I mean, you don't really know each other. I, I, I totally agree. I went on a museum date years ago that was so much fun. I don't even know if museums are open right now, but it it what's fun is also you're talking about the things and you're finding out about their history and their culture. And it's a way in without it being an interview, which I think is super important. I love activity dates and everything you said there is bang on. They're the best. Yeah, Um, they really are, especially for people who tend to be a little bit shy and get a little intimidated by dates. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So now you've gone on these dates you're going to meet up with the person I suggest at least a couple of times. And then 
if you guys feel like there's a lot of chemistry there, go get tested and then get physical if you want to. I mean, this COVID doesn't seem to be going away and we can't let it stop us from finding love because it's been a year now and people who have been single may have been single a lot longer prior to COVID. So that's, that can be lonely. So don't let COVID stop you from finding love. Put yourself out there. I love that. Well, that's a good place to end. I think that we, there's so many great ideas and tips here to really increase your dating success, whether it's a pandemic or not. We really have so many options to be more proactive, to enhance our profiles, enhance how we show up, who we, who we spend time with, who we don't spend time with. We have a lot more control than a lot of people think. And um, I, I appreciate all the tips that you shared today, Laura. Thank you for having me, Sandy. My pleasure. So tell everybody how they can find you. Well, my website is singleinthecity.ca and my Instagram is official Laura Bellotta, B-I-L-O-T-T-A. And uh, I also host the Dating and Relationship Show on Global News Radio 640 Toronto. It's also a podcast. You can find it on Apple Podcasts and iTunes. And that's pretty much how they can find me. And on Clubhouse. <laughs> and on Clubhouse under Laura Bellotta. <laughs> when she's up all night doing Clubhouse rooms. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm tired. I'm a little brain dead today because I was up. I, I was going, guys, I have to do a podcast tomorrow. And I know when, I, <laughs> when I'm when i tired, I'm my brain doesn't function as well. I think that's probably everybody. You get a little foggy. Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> then I got up again at 3.30 in the morning and the room was still going. It's like, okay, it's time to shut down. They're like, no, we're going to keep running it. So I was like, okay, I got to go to bed. I can't stay up. Yeah, these rooms, some of them last for days. It's for days. I was in amazing. a marathon room. I think that's the one that you came into on the weekend. I was in a marathon room on Saturday. Yeah. I, no, it was Sunday. It, it lasted it was Sunday all day, all night. And then Saturday, I think it ended around 6 p.m. in the evening. Yeah, I, and, I kept coming in and out and going, what is happening? It's still happening. Still yeah, happening. it's yeah. crazy. But it also provides so many new opportunities. So anybody who says it's impossible to find love hasn't looked in all the right places. So that's right. People will take away these great tips today. Thank you again. And Thanks everybody for listening. And if you love our show, please rate and review us. It always helps. And we hope you go on your last first date very soon. Bye.